Hey guys, I'm Cece and you might be like, oh, this is a weird format, a different format than normal, especially if you are getting this on your podcast feed. So I have decided to move everything, all of my content for the most part onto Substack, which is where I am posting this from. Of course, I still have YouTube, I still have, you know, the other socials, but I have actually decided to really double down on Substack and to give you guys an update on all the thinking that led to this point. All right, I have uh, some notes. So I think, you know, first is welcome new subscribers. I was really, really happy to be featured on Substack as a featured publication last week. and like, I don't know, got that email at 11 a.m. and just really freaked out because it was very nice. So welcome new subscribers. And then of course, welcome to my returning subscribers. Um, for the longest time, I felt a lot of shame about creative work, not because that I found, not because I found creative work shameful per se, but because I do think there is an element of embarrassment when you make anything for public consumption, especially when it's something from your mind. And secondly, because working as a lawyer, it really trains you to view creative work as not really work work. So any kind of creative work I did in the law firm environment, those are usually writing client alerts, writing articles, um, all of that kind of stuff. It's not really considered billable work. <laughs> for law firms. So for the most part, I was like, yeah, you know, it's like work work, but it's not billable work. So it's not really work work in the way that I was trained to think of work work. And I think because of that mindset, I always thought, well, I would never really <laughs> be a person who felt comfortable charging for creative work. Um, because I don't know, it's like, it's embarrassing. And moreover than embarrassing, so much of life has been yelling at me that it's not real work. But you know what's real work? Billing hours. <laughs> um, and I think on top of that, there was also this idea I had in my mind, especially because a lot of my content is informational or educational, right? Or thought provoking. I think that in my ideal world, this information should be free, right? Like in a perfect world, any information, anything to help you in your career, anything to help you navigate corporate settings, anything to help you just like navigate life, I think should be free. I think it's crazy that there are so many publications out there that in order to get the best information, you have to pay a lot sometimes. Um, and I don't know, that's just like, that makes me feel really, really uncomfortable. And when I had been talking to people about how to make a living as a writer, they suggested, oh, maybe you can do things like offer law school essay, you know, law school admissions essay reviews for a certain fee or to paywall your um, career advice. But I felt deeply uncomfortable with that because I don't know that like that type of information is exactly the type of information that I think should be free. So if I'm not comfortable paywalling that, then what do I ever charge for, if anything? Or do I just do what a lot of creative people do, which is uh, write on the side and then just do my day job, whatever my day job is to pay the bills and then make time for what I really love to do, which is write. Um, I do really believe in the democratizing power of the internet and I would hope that that is where the internet goes, but I've also come to want to at least see if maybe there is a way for me to sell out a little, yes, but not sell out completely because I don't really want to sell out completely, at least not yet. Um, so I thought a little bit about how I wanted to run this account, the Substack, and I thought more about like what I liked about creating in the first place and when I stopped liking creating certain things and why that happened. So in my early days of making TikToks, I actually just did it because I 
wanted to do something creative and it was the peak of the pandemic and there was nothing else to do. And somewhere along the way, before I posted anything, I would always think to myself, oh Cece, is this something that people are going to get mad about? Is this something that you are going to find a Daily Mail article written about you and then heinous comments? Is this something that is then going to lead to you getting really racist and not great emails in your inbox? And I realized that that kind of censoring myself, that kind of editing myself, kind of took the joy out of creating for me uh, somewhere along the way. And it's a certain editing and censorship that I find myself doing right now as I work on my book, which isn't good because I know that in order to get a first draft out, you need to just be okay with a very bad first draft and you need to write sober, edit, drunk. No, sorry, other other way around. <laughs> write drunk, edit, sober. <laughs> sorry. Um, I thought about like, oh, what is an example of something I created and put out in the world that I really, really liked, but then I totally regretted putting it out there. And it was one of my first viral videos really, which was a breakdown of what my big law paycheck that like $180,000 back in the day, and this was like, what, 2016, 2017? I think the first year associate salary is like 220,000 now. It's like crazy. Um, but just for inflation, I think it's the same. But I thought back to, why I wanted to make that video, which is because when I was younger and I thought about making money in the world, when I thought about existing in the world, I was like, wow, $180,000, I am going to ball out. Like that is an amount where I can buy luxury bags every weekend. I can just like go to Michelin star restaurants all the time. I can like really have a gossip girl experience. Uh, was that dumb of me? Absolutely, that was incredibly dumb. And I had a lot of privileges, right, that meant I could ignore the realities of adulthood for super long, right? My parents paid for undergrad and I didn't really have to worry about sending money to them or like taking care of relatives or any like huge health issues. All I had to do was essentially exist and study, which I was good at. But when I started my job, when I had to deal with things like looking at retirement, looking at health, health savings accounts, looking at um, repaying my law school student loans, those were the moments when I was like, oh, <laughs> being an adult is, it's, it eats into your paycheck more than I had initially envisioned. So I was like, you know what, if I didn't know this, I'm sure a lot of people don't know this. So I made this video, that TikTok to kind of explain that. And at first I was like really happy I did. I got really good feedback and people were like, you know, thanks for talking about money, especially because I know in Western culture, it's a little taboo to talk about like salary or rent or money and all of that, which is really funny because in China, everyone just talks about money all the time. Like it's so normal to talk about stuff like that. So because it didn't like bother me on an etiquette level to talk about things like that, I was like, all right, let me just talk about it because I think it's important. And it's the stuff I would have wanted to know when I was in college. But anyway, I talked about it. And then uh, of course, once a video hits more than a million views, you just have a really miserable experience with it. And now I actually have a policy where like if a video hits more than like a certain number of views, I just don't look at the comments anymore for my own mental health. But back then it was one of my first viral videos and I read a lot of the comments and it was honestly a very miserable experience. It made me want to not share. It made me want to just clam up and retreat in a corner because it felt like not only had I done something wrong, but I was like a bad person. Um, sometimes the comments when you talk about things that really, I don't even want to say are controversial, but that a lot of other people have opinions about, it's very easy to feel then that by saying something, you are like a bad human being. Um, and I never really wanted to talk about stuff like that again. I never wanted to talk about my finances again. And I never wanted to talk about like, you know, what I spend in a days, um, my student loan repayment, all of that, because it made me feel so bad sometimes when I did. But at the same time, I feel like the almighty algorithms, they really want you to talk about stuff like that. And you realize when you make certain types of videos that certain things like finances, like what I eat in a days, like all these like very personal and potentially triggering topics 
end up doing much better than maybe the purely educational topics or the topics that you think are really valuable to share but uh, the algorithms don't really pick up on. And I feel like this leads to a choice that a lot of creators have to confront, right? Which is you have to lay bare your personal life for public consumption or risk irrelevance. And there's this somehow like push to completely annihilate yourself through public consumption. And this push is immense because when you are at the will of an algorithm, you if you're a people pleaser, right, like me, you want to please the alg algorithm, you want to please this thing, and you get instant feedback and metrics on when you're pleasing this algorithm. Um, I read this interview with Issa Rae where she was interviewed about the memoir that she wrote in her 20s, and she said she uh, regretted exposing so much of her personal life in a book at such an early age. And that I really kind of identified with that because I think my content, my writing, will always toe the line, toe the line? Straddle. Straddle the line between informational and personal. I think that the best way to use stories is to convey information and that we are curious about other people and we are much more likely to learn about things and actually retain things and find things interesting if it is through a human interest lens. And I like using myself as an example for many things because I think it's easier to use yourself as an example than to talk about someone else whom you don't probably have the permission of to talk about them. So I really like to talk about my own finances, my own mental health, my own experiences with everything, but not for the sake of just talking about myself. I like to use it as a way to demonstrate some principle or information or process. I feel like one of my favorite videos that I ever made was when I went through um, cognitive behavioral therapy, one of the techniques I learned in therapy, to walk through how I respond and think to really negative comments that I get, which I'm sure you get your inner critic stuff too all the time and you probably get negative comments from friends, family, um, bosses, colleagues, the outside world. So I really wanted to demonstrate like how I work through that. And it's one of those videos that I really would <laughs> like to make more, but nowadays I don't really see myself doing because the internet at large has kind of made me smaller. It's made me want to fence myself in more, to be quiet, to not say as much, to not be so loud. And I was thinking about how I could potentially counteract this phenomenon, particularly because as I write my nonfiction book about my time in big law, about other people's time in big law, I've realized that I need to get a little bit more carefree with my communications and a little bit more just like freer generally with how I express and how I communicate and not just be paralyzed by the thought of perfection, which is I think good for a lawyer to do, but not good for a writer, a creative to do. So I was like, oh God, how do I kind of create the safe space for myself to share more with you, with the people who actually care about me, while not allowing the people who really don't care about me and don't care about uh, my thoughts to enter and infiltrate and all of that. I feel like in many ways, some of the things I want to talk about, like my financial journey going from a very highly paid W-2 job to my current, you know, entrepreneurship, writing income, weird 1099 life. Uh, I, I really want to talk about that because I think about those things all the time. I want to talk about things like the uh, therapy techniques that I've been learning so that I can share it with you guys and maybe you guys can find it valuable too. And these are all things I really, really want to talk about, but I don't because in some ways, like these ideas are like baby kittens. And if you've ever had baby kittens, you know that they're very delicate. They can die if they aren't handled delicately and fed a lot and really, really taken care of. And I feel like these ideas are my baby kittens, where if there's 
too much roughness, too much of the real world just waiting <laughs> to destroy them, they will be destroyed and they will never be able to grow into something more polished, something stronger, something that is like an adult cat, like my beautiful adult cat. So I was like, oh, I would love to be able to get a little bit freer with all of this. And in terms of what I want to do with the Substack is use the paid subscription to my Substack as an opportunity to share all of these things with you. So nascent essay ideas. I feel like I only publish on my free posts the like very polished, very copy edited. I've like read it over five times. It is like ready. I only publish those posts, but I do have a lot of other ideas in the interim that I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like maybe, maybe that could be a kernel of something, but I don't share them because I don't think they're like ready for prime time. But if you like ideas that aren't ready for prime time and are just curious and want to talk to me about them, uh, then this will be for you. Um, other things I want to talk about, you know, details about my writing schedule and process, especially as they're changing, articles I've been nonstop texting friends about, and just like more raw video updates like this and also voice memos. I love getting voice memos on my phone and I'd really like to use this platform to be able to like send voice memos to you. Um, and if you like all of these things that I have prevented myself from doing because I am so afraid of the specter of total personal annihilation through public consumption, then I think you would be a great member of my community as I kind of build it out. So for the price of a matcha latte every month, which is really, really valuable. And if you find my work and my writing as valuable as that, then I'd really like you to consider becoming a paid subscriber. For one week, I will be offering 28% uh, off of annual subscriptions, which comes out to a 40% discount from just subscribing monthly. And of course, it is way more important to me that you actually be a part of this community than to get your subscription. So uh, if you are a student without disposable income, if you are unemployed or underemployed or a minimum wage worker or just something in your life where you aren't able to afford uh, this, you can just uh, email me. There is gonna be a link at the bottom of this post as well as a link to a Google form, you can just fill out any of those and I will comp you a one year subscription, no questions asked, because it is way more important to me to have you here and to be in conversation with you than to, uh, I don't know, have your subscription money. <laughs> the subscription is more of a gate to keep out the trolls and to protect my darling kins. And then of course, if you do have the financial means and would like to donate one of these subscriptions, there's also a link below that you can use to donate one of these subscriptions to someone who otherwise might not be able to afford it. Okay, and this is very long, um, but thank you so much for reading Debrief, for listening to my podcast. And I'm just really, really grateful to have you all here. I don't know where my life is going and I don't know where really any of this is going, but I am excited to figure it out and I, I am excited to have you here for it. And I am excited to do something that allows you a little bit more into my inner sanctum and my thoughts because I mean, that's what I aim to do, right? Is I aim to connect with others because it's what is most important about art to me. So my first paid post, which will be a breakdown of the lifestyle and financial changes that I've made and that have been thrust upon me since going from big law to writing, uh, that post will be available tomorrow. So if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing. And thank you guys so much for reading, for listening, for supporting me. Um, I really can't tell you how much I appreciate it. All right. Love you all. Mwah.